NFC win totals, courtesy of our friends at Points Bet. They came out over this weekend. And let's take a look at some of these, beginning with the NFC South. And this is these are not based on a 17. Are they based on 17 or not well, based well, on 17? Well, of course they, they are. Well, based what, on well, that 17. is the, the dumbest question you've asked in our that five years. Question. Are they Listen. basing this on the season that we're going to play this year? Or are they going to base it off a fake number of games they might play this year? <laughs> Here's what happens. Here's what happens when someone's talking to you while you're talking. Sometimes things aren't clear. And I was alarmed. It's like, wait a minute. They're not based on a 17 game season. Maybe uh. they came out before the, the season went to 17. These are based on 17. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Buccaneers based on a 17 game season in the NFC South. 11 and a half is the win total. So that would project to 11 and a half and five and a half under a 17 game season. New Orleans only nine, which I guess makes sense with Drew Brees now retired. Carolina at seven and a half. Atlanta at seven. Again, this is all based on a 17 game season because the season will now be 17 <laughs> games. I, it's it's weird to get used to that. You know, you, you, you just automatically see 11 and 11 and a half, and you think, oh, okay. Will they be 11 and 5 or 12 and 4? This is going to take some, like, total mental juggling here to get used to this. But, like, I, I mean, again, I look at the Bucks at 11 and a half. Would that team – an extra game, all that. I mean, yeah, I, I, I look at that right off the bat and just go, they're going to win more than 11 and a, 11 and a half games. I, I'd be, I'd be surprised if they didn't. I know it's never easy as a Super Bowl winner, defending champion, all of those type of things. But also, it's like we've talked about it before. You bring it up all the time. I mean, they got a guy like Brady there who's going to, you know, keep a hot poker next to everybody's butt, so they're on their p's and q's. And I think it's a team that's like. It, it's it, it just kind of started to come together at the end of the year. I mean, really, it was the last few games in the playoffs to where them winning and being dominant, I think it's kind of new to the team there to where I do expect them to have a jump off here and kind of hit the ground running when, when we start the 2021 season. There are factors that go into this, and, and obviously who you play yeah, right. is one of the big factors, the, the divisions out. that you play, how the yeah. schedule plays out this year. And they've got this year the teams of the NFC East, which should fatten things up a little bit, and also the teams of the AFC East, which – that division will be more difficult Definitely. than it was last year. Yeah. But that's conducive to all the teams of the NFC South maybe winning more games than they otherwise would. And then that crossover game, that one extra game, is Buccaneers at the Indianapolis Colts in 2021. But, you know, the other side of it too, Chris, and, and I suspect these numbers will change throughout the remainder of the offseason. Right. Betting trends will be part of it. But once we know exactly what the schedule is when will the difficult games be played will you have a chance to come out of the gates against some easier opponents and build some momentum and fatten up your record and carry that into october november december that's a very real factor yeah definitely. every year definitely. there's a team out there that gets an easy start to the season and builds confidence and then we'll see what they do with it. Sometimes they get exposed later when they get to the tougher part of the schedule. Right, right. Sometimes they're better prepared for the tougher part of the schedule because they've managed to win games early and they feel better about themselves, especially with a new coach. You get a new coach and an easy schedule. You get guys to buy into what the coach is doing. Definitely. And you're in a better position to beat those good teams. No, I, it is the, to me, that's the real aspect. of you talk about like, you know, the, the, the future year that you're looking at, it's, that's that first four or five games when you talk about schedule. Schedule. That's why I always laugh when like I see people on TV like, here's week 16 in December. I'm going to give them a win, even though I don't know how many guys will be healthy on their team or that team or anything like that. You know, yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, I think that's the point, Mike, that you make. It's about what you got early on in the year. Does that give you a cushion? Is it going to put you in the hole to where you're going to have to battle back? You know, either way, Tampa, you look at the roster, you go, there's nothing that they don't have. It's a special roster. I think the the thing I question, I think, with anything there in the NFC South a little bit is, yeah, we know the Saints are a question mark. It's no Drew Brees for a long time. How good are they going to be? I think we would both agree we still think they're going to be real good in the playoff conversation type good. I'm not going to sit here and say they're a definite playoff team, but I would be shocked if they're not flirting with that. 
The other thing too uh, is just I'm taking the over on that one. I'm I, sorry. I, I I mean I'm not I'm not betting on any of these. Right. But if anyone out there wants some free advice, you're and going you're to get your money's worth. Bet the over on the Saints at nine. Are you kidding me? I would think so too. There's no doubt. I mean, the t- with 17 games, 17. That's games. that's a nine and eight record. They're not going to be nine and eight. They're going to be ten and seven at least. Now yeah. watch, they'll be six and eleven. Well, boy, it's going to be hard to get used to. It's, it really is. It, well, here's the other thing too. Just you know, as far as Tampa's concerned, and we talk about them. You know, I, I would expect Carolina and Atlanta to be a different football team this year too. I mean, we know Atlanta has some talent. And, you know, now you got the new coaching energy bump like you're talking about. There's that. Carolina the same way. We'll see what they do at quarterback. Of course, that could affect some of these wins totals and everything like that too. But I would think as a whole, just as a, as a totality in the NFC South, the one negative the Bucks have is I think the division will be better this year. You know, th- that's where I think you're not going to just be able to go, okay, Carolina, we're going to beat them twice. Atlanta, we're going to beat them twice. There's four wins. Bam, we're good. I, I think it could be a little more dicey this year uh, as far as those teams are concerned. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, I agree with what you're saying about the South. But remember, it's always a zero-sum game. There's only so many games played, and there's a winner and a loser for every game. And the one thing that you'll see, in addition to people trying to – pick winners of games to be played in late December. And we know that always happens the night the schedule comes out. That's part of what that three-hour show on all the networks that have the three-hour shows is devoted to. You also have the one-loss records that when you add it up across all teams, it's more wins than losses. Yeah, right. Because we're not taking into account the fact that people will be losing these games in addition to winning these games. NFC West, toughest division in football. San Francisco and L.A. tied at 10 and a half again based on a 17 game season tied at 10 and a half seattle at nine and a half arizona at eight um are you surprised la seems yeah i'm surprised la is not alone i'm surprised la is not number one i i I mean i I am too i guess i'm surprised that san francisco is right there at 10 and a half just neck and neck with them you know, I, I get it being close, but, I, you know, like we talked about the first hour, first off, we don't even know if Jimmy G or who the quarterback is for the 49ers yet. That's where I guess I'm a little surprised. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the team is talented, but uh, I'm with you. The, the NFC West, it's really – I mean, you look at it and you look at those four teams there and you go, all right, well, two of them, we're not sure those are going to be the quarterbacks in five weeks. I mean, there's we, we still think there's a chance Russell Wilson gets traded out of Seattle – And who the hell knows what happens here with the San Francisco 49ers and the number three pick. So uh, I think that's the amazing thing about the division, let alone it's like incredibly talented. And the team at the top, like you're talking about the Rams, I'm with you. I think they should probably be alone. But man, they're a team that I'll go back to it again. It's like one or two injuries on that team. And you go, watch out. They're going to be in trouble. They're so top heavy. There's no depth to their football team. So I'm excited about them, but I do worry about them from that aspect. All right, 49ers, 10 and a half, and we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. What would you have the number at if you knew it was going to be Jimmy G? And what would you have the number at if you knew it was going to be rookie taking third overall? Oh, wow. How, what, what would the spread be? Ooh, that, that's a really good question. Mm, okay, so, I mean, you're assuming, yeah. Uh, I, I, guess, I guess I would feel better about Jimmy G as far as overall record things are going to be like that. I do think maybe there's a chance for – just off the top of my head of the 49ers offense reaching a higher level with maybe one of these young quarterbacks at type at, at pick number three, you know? Yeah. I, listen, I'm intrigued by the athleticism of guys like field and Lance. I don't think they're number three picks in the draft. I do think Mac Jones might be able to do some Matt Ryan type stuff, but it's hard for me to sit there and just take a rookie and say his win total is going to be better than a Jimmy Garoppolo who plays a whole year. So I guess where I don't think it's a huge difference where I'll go like, okay, rookie year quarterback versus Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm going to go Jimmy Garoppolo gets 11 wins, maybe 11 and a half type of like where the rookie I'm going to go to, you know, I'm going to set the bar at like nine and a half, maybe 10 right there. I'm going to give Jimmy G at least an extra win for sure over a rookie quarterback. I am. See, I, I think it should be tight 
because it's the Shanahan offense. Yes, so it's not right. going to matter in my mind exactly. who the quarterback is. Right. I don't see a huge spread there. Another reason that maybe this is why the 49ers and the Rams are equal, yeah. because of that 17th game and because of the natural spread in where you finish, the Rams this year will be facing at some point – the Ravens in Baltimore wow. as the 17th game for the 49ers. It's a trip to Cincinnati to play the Bengals. Right. So that's one where you see a more likely win for the 49ers than for the Rams. Right. And also across the division, they play all the teams of the NFC North and all the teams of the AFC South. And also, also Rams will play the Buccaneers this year. 49ers because of where they finished in the division will play the Falcons instead so you know there are now three games of the 17 right. that are tied to where you finish it used to be two now there's three right and for for the Rams two of those games are Buccaneers Ravens and those two games corresponding for the 49ers are Bengals and Falcons and that's that's a reason to explain why Ten and a half is the number for both teams. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, you you gotta you gotta think about that aspect a little bit now. You're right with that extra game, that extra crossover game with the the AFC football team. Uh, that that thought has to go through your brain, definitely. I mean, we, yeah, we don't know how that works out, but sitting here right now in April at base level, you're right. That seems advantage 49ers there, and at least those two football games. We'll see where the rest goes. But man, what an unbelievable division. I mean, we got two teams. We got two teams with like uh, quarterbacks. We can't wait to see what happens. And we got two other teams where we don't know what the hell is going to happen at quarterback. And one of them has one of the five best quarterbacks in the game. I mean, it's just the, the talent of the, this division is up there with anybody. And uh, man, good defensive play. You know, Matt Stafford in Los Angeles. How can you not be excited about that? The Cardinals have improved their football team this offseason. You know, with getting J.J. Watts, you know, trading for Rodney Hudson, doing that. So, uh, I mean, I'm really excited to see how it shakes out there. That really is quite a dip, though, for the Seahawks. And it shows that at least the betting markets for now don't have a lot of faith in Shane Waldron as the new offensive coordinator getting more out of that team. They were 12-4 and four last know. year and the division champions. And uh, the idea that they're going to dip to that extent is surprising to me. But, uh, but again, we don't even know who the quarterback's going to be. That's what makes these, these numbers even more speculative at this point because of the fact that there's still a lot of offseason to go, a lot of moves can be made. This is all pre-draft. Yeah, these right. numbers will change, and not just because of betting trends. They're going to change because there will be developments and changes in the roster, and we're going to feel differently about these teams, especially if the Seahawks would end up trading Russell Wilson. But premised upon them having Russell Wilson – I would expect that number to be higher than nine and a half. Especially yeah, do you think there's an adjustment season. made there after the draft is over just because of that? Do you if think he's that's not made? traded? Yeah, right? Like, if he's not traded and now they're like, okay, that's off the table. He's definitely going to be there. You know, now we can bump him up another win because we weren't sure, you know, before this where he was going to be. But now, you know, I, I would think that gives him another – half game if we get out of the draft and he's not traded that that gets bumped up a little bit I would think I think it will I yeah. think if he's still on the team after the draft that number definitely moves up just because beyond anything else I think people would would pounce on the over on nine and a half if it stays at nine and a half after the draft and Russell Wilson is still on the team NFC North Packers 13 and three in 2020 13 and three in 2021 there's the win total premised on a 17 game season 10 and a half i know right again kind of pops out 17 game season confirmed yet again this is based on a 17 game season that one does jump out right? as being surprisingly low i agreed I, I just think you look at that i, I think the the big thing just like again right off the bat is just to go uh, i i don't know i i mean is there anybody that we really view as a serious threat to the packers in that division sitting here right now i mean maybe the bears I mean, maybe, but I, 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 again, I'm not ready to sit here and go, oh, Minnesota's ready to challenge. I'm not ready to say that yet. I think they'll be good. Could be a pain in the butt. I don't know if they're ready to, like, be an NFC North challenger for the championship there. The Lions, I certainly don't expect that. So that's where it's like 17-game season, 10.5 wins, 
Aaron Rodgers playing awesome football. I mean, that's one right now where I, I if I was a betting person, I would I would throw money on that right now and get it for the low. The teams of the AFC North will be played by the teams of the NFC North, all four of them across the board, and also yeah. the teams of the NFC West. So it will not be an that's, easy that's, season that's, that's for the NFC lower. North teams. Right. And and Packers extra game at Kansas City. Vikings extra game at the LA Chargers. That's another one that that is going to be tied sure. to where you finished. And the Packers' reward for being the first place team in the NFC North is pack up and go to Arrowhead Stadium at some point and potentially take an L from Patrick Mahomes and company. So I think that's a factor. The Vikings at eight and a half strike me as low simply because we know the formula by now. The roller coaster under Mike Zimmer. Odd number of years, you get to the playoffs. Even number of years, you don't. And they've they've bumped up that defense to the point where Zimmer is feeling rejuvenated, although the pass rush still needs some help. And they still don't have a replacement for Riley Reef at left tackle. Other than that, everything's fine for the Vikings. But I could see them with fans present, however yeah. many are in the stands. Right. That's a different dynamic for the Vikings this year. I think one of the reasons they got knocked wobbly last year is they didn't have a home field advantage, and that really did hamper them in multiple games. I, you, you add fans, you give them a little bit of an easier schedule, you improve that defense. I'm not saying they're ready to challenge the Packers as the champions of the division, but I think they're, they're in a Super position Bowl. to be better than, Super than eight Bowl. and a half. Super no. Bowl. No. <laughs> no. Wild card berth and maybe a wild card win and then a loss by 20 in the divisional round. That's the best case scenario, but that's still more than eight and a half wins in a 17 game season. Yeah, no, I mean, yes, uh, I, I I could see that type of scenario. I mean, and, and it's, you know, your hashtag science formula there with odd years. So it means that they're going to be better. Yes, definitely. Uh, what do you feel about your team? I mean, what do you think? Have you done enough here in free agency to make yourself feel a little bit better about where you guys are going? Wild card berth, maybe a win in the wild card round, lost in the division round by 20 points. That's my position. That's that's until further notice. That's my position in the odd numbered years. In the even numbered years, it's no playoffs at all. That's the history. I can only rely on history, and that's the trend the Vikings have developed. How about Detroit with five? That's the lowest of any team that's on the board. The Texans are off the board for a variety of reasons, the most important of which is they don't know who their quarterback's going to be, but the Lions know it's going to be Jared Goff, and 5-12 and 12 is the projected record, and I don't know that I would touch the over on that one, Chris. Well, there's definitely questions. I mean, you know, first off, you just want to go, yeah, there's Jared Goff at quarterback. That's a question. You know, yeah, Dan Campbell, certainly different as far as a head coach is concerned. How's that going to work out? You know, so there's that aspect. They've changed over a lot of their football team. You look at their offense and you go, okay, wait, who's who's the driving force? Who Who's the go-to guy? Galladay's not there. Marvin Jones is gone. DeAndre Swift showed some promise, certainly as a rookie. Can Hawkinson become that guy? I mean, I just think there's a ton of questions, and that goes for the defense too. You flip it over there and you just go – Okay, is Okuda going to pop out in year two as the number three pick? He was a little disappointing last year. After that, you know, who is there that's a big-time playmaker in the secondary? We had these discussions last week. The front seven, you know, they've overplayed Trey Flowers. He's a good player, but he's being paid like he's one of the top edge rushers in football. He's not that. You know, they got Okwara, who they re-signed, who showed some promise off the edge. I don't know, but there's just lack of, like – Big time difference makers, playmakers, and then I think you add that to new coaches and questioning maybe their approach. I I get it. I, I understand why five is is associated with their name. Yeah, I ha I have no faith in the Lions this year, and uh, maybe the Dan Campbell kneecap biting style bites your will make a difference. Off. Here we go, Dan. Uh, uh, but but uh, I, I, we'll see. Hey, look, everything they've tried for 60 years has failed so they're trying something new okay it can't be any worse than what we've seen it's been 30 years since they've won a playoff game for crying out loud so different is positive different is good maybe eventually they'll stumble into a style that will work for the Detroit Lions and they'll actually win some football games but even then given 
the trade of Matthew Stafford, the assets they're getting in return, it just feels like they're building for something down the road that Definitely. they're not really trying to go all in now. Right. And if they end up being good this year, great, great. That that just accelerates their potential to be better in 2022 or 23. I feel like there's a tear down now with a build yes. up coming in the future right. and they very well could be 3 and 14 this year. That still sounds so weird. 3 and 14, but laying the foundation to be to be better, faster than they've ever been. Yeah, no, I, I think it's 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 the right move. They they got to, you know, rip the band-aid off here. This is not one where it's like, you know, hey, we're going to put a new band-aid on and a little more neosporin and we'll figure out how to get this thing better as we go. No. There's nothing to get better. You know, it needs a total tear down, rebuild, all of that makes sense. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what they do there in Detroit. Neosporin, way better than merthiolate, which is definitely, definitely. What's that old timer? Old man. Oh, <laughs> it was this nasty stuff. There were two types, mercurochrome and merthiolate. This was pre-neosporin. Play the music. I don't care. You cut yourself when you were a kid. Right. And it was this nasty, like it stained your skin orange. Right. And and, and the mercurochrome did not burn. The merthiolate was awful. It burned. It like burned out the bacteria. Anyway. <laughs> That's great. That's Thank you. Great. Thank you. Is that a, what, what kind of, is that a Victrola? That's I don't back know in your called. day. So, uh, so anyway, NFC East win totals. Thank you very much. Dallas, it's always Dallas. Why? On paper, it's, it's, it's can always they Dallas. Never not be Dallas. It's always, it, it's, it's always Dallas. Vegas, and is then obsessed. they play the games, and it's not. Yeah, nine and a half. Right. I, I, that's that's what jumps out to me. It just go, Dallas, like just hands down, a game and a half better than everybody else in the division. Why? What the hell have they done to improve their football team? Yeah, they'll have Dak Prescott back, not at a hundred percent to start the year. I mean. Their defense, I know they got Dan Quinn, and I expect it to be improved, but there's still nothing there where I just go, oh, that defense is going to turn it around. Watch out. It's special. There's talent there. They were just misused. I don't get that one. I really don't. As I sit here in the NFC East right now, and you know, you could throw out the divisions and things that they're going to play, I just look at Washington and go, wow, how can you not like everything about their roster? I know there's the Ryan Fitzpatrick, the question there. I think it fits how they want to play and what they want to do. So, yeah, I'm shocked by Dallas a game and a half over these other teams. There's no way. Washington and New York are every bit the quality of Dallas. And I think in a lot of ways, I look at their team and their complete roster and go, I think Washington and New York's rosters are better than the Dallas Cowboys. Other than wide receiver, that's it. The Giants seem low to me at seven. I think so They really too. do. Yeah. And, and, and also the Eagles seem way too high at six and a half. I, I, I don't know that I would go out and wager my hard earned money on the under just yet, but the six and a half seems optimistic for a team that like the lions feels like it's in the early stages of a tear down rebuild. And the tear down means you're going to lose games. You're, it's unavoidable. You're going to lose games in 2021 and six and a half to me seems very optimistic. Yeah, I, it, I I agreed. I, I that's another one that's like you're saying the Lions. It's it's a rebuild. It's ripped the Band-Aid off. We have a lot of work to do here, all together. I mean, again, NFC is going to be interesting. You know, how good are they going to be? Uh, I don't know. You know, but I the one thing that just pops out too with this whole like schedule and everything like that. I mean, man, we we could definitely end up seeing. You know, an eight and nine football team. We could have some underwhelming schedules getting the playoffs here again with the 17 games. You could, especially in a division like the NFCs this year. You know, just to, uh, with them being very equal, they could beat each other up, play some cross cross conference and division teams that way, lose those, and all of a sudden we're sitting there. I wonder how the NFL would feel about that if they had start to look at teams going below 500 in the playoffs every year. I don't think that's necessarily a great look. The NFC East plays all four teams of the AFC West and all four teams of the NFC South, which means every team in the worst division in football will play both the Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs in 2021, which, yes, will make a bad division even worse. And I think that at the end of the day, 
the NFL is just going to deal with it if there's yeah. a division that has a team that's below 500 because the owners do not want to give up that one in four shot of hosting a playoff game under the current structure. And in any given year, in theory, you've got a 25% chance of winning your division and hosting a playoff game. They're not going to change that structure. Yeah, right. And they're not going to get away from the current configuration of teams unless and until there are more teams added, which I still think is coming at some point down the line in order to help build inventory. Tomorrow we'll take a look at the AFC team win totals as projected by PointsBet. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.